I will send you the queue when it's actually live. Okie dokie. Got to get with the program, Counselor Kent. I guess I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh. The meeting is live now. Thank you very much. I want to welcome everyone to our meeting. I am uh, Becky Kent, and I'll be chairing today's meeting in the absence of our chair and vice chair, the Active Transportation Advisory Committee, special meeting as of April 15th, 2021. Um, just want to confirm before we move forward that we have quorum. We can ask the clerk. Yes, we do have a quorum. Thank you. For the benefit of everyone who's uh, participating, this meeting will be a live broadcast for people at home to view through YouTube. The, uh, the clerk will need a minute or two to send us live, but we've already done that. Um, at this stage, we'll call to order and we will ask each member to identify themselves as, as present. So, and introduce themselves. So we'll start with chair uh, with, uh, well, I've already introduced myself. So we'll go right to Ashley Bowers. Ashley here. Okay, we'll leave that in case she comes forward. Douglas, are you here? Yes, I yep, see you. I'm here. Thank you, Douglas Wetmore. Miles McCormick. Present. Thank you. Paul Berry. Not hearing anything from Paul. Andrew Taylor. Not hearing anything from Andrew. Melina mm, K. <laughs> Melina Kazanavich is present. Uh, Thank blind. You. No problem. Blind and guide dog Lewis in the house as well. <laughs> oh, terrific. There's a fill in one of those folks that are, are not no, here. That's exactly. <laughs> Elizabeth Bush. Not seeing, hearing anything from Sorry. Elizabeth. Uh, yeah, I'm oh. here. Thank you. Elizabeth oh, good. Pew. Oh, it is Pew. Okay. Do we have it spelled right? How do you spell your last name? P U G H. Yeah, we do. We have it in S on my my um oh, okay. paperwork. So we'll correct that. So my apologies. Megan Doucette. I see yeah. you. <laughs> Terrific. Thank you. And Allison Carlisle. Yes, I'm here. Terrific. Well, welcome to everyone. And I'll just review one more time to make sure we haven't had any additions. Ashley, Paul, and Andrew. Okay. So my understanding is that we have Dave McIsaac. Are you here as a staff member? Yep, that's correct. I'm here. Thank you. Megan Bacos? Uh, no, I don't think Megan's got anything on uh, on the agenda today. Okay, thank you. And Melissa Eve, Evis. Yep, that's me. Okay, Present. thank you. All right, that's all that I think we were expecting today. We'll move on to item number two, the approval of the minutes for March 25th, 2021. Have uh, We'll just ask that all committees to uh, identify if they've had a chance to review and if you see any errors or omissions. Hearing none, is there someone who will move to approve those minutes? Melana approves. Thank you, is there a seconder? I can second. And can you identify yourself? Sorry, Allison. Thank <laughs> Seconding. You, Allison. Thank you. And I'll call for the question. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed nay. And we'll motion is carried. Move on to item number three, approval of the order of business. Um, we'll ask the clerk now if have there been any additions or deletions to the order of business? There is no additional deletion for today's meeting. Thank you very much. We need a um, person to move that we approve this order of business. I can move that. Thank you, Douglas. Douglas here. Thank you. We have a seconder. I can do that. Thank you, Miles. And all in favor say aye. 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 Those, those opposed nay. Hearing none, the motion's carried. 
And move on to item number four, business arising out of the minutes. We have none to discuss at the have no business. Call of declaration of conflict of interest. We ask all committee members to identify any conflicts of interest at this point, please. Hearing none, seeing nothing in the chat. I'm gonna just open that up so I can see it a little better. Thank you. No uh, identifications of conflict of interest. We'll move on to item items in under consideration of deferred business. So item 6.1, and it's around a committee discussion of case 23224, the former Penhor Mall lands. Now we'd ask, I guess at this point for Melissa to come forward and answer some questions from the committee. Um, we, I just wanna remind members that uh, I'll go through a speaking list to give everyone an opportunity to ask their questions. And, and Melissa, are you doing a presentation or a, of any sort here? Or is this just an open ask, asking questions if they had a chance to read the report? Um, I don't have a formal presentation. I can give you an overview if you want of what the ask is and where we're at in the application. I, the committee would find that helpful. Otherwise, I'm open to moving to questions. I'll leave it up to you. Okay. So at this stage, um, I'm going to skip my name and Ashley, do you have any questions around this report? Sorry, I was just able to join. Um, so you the report you're referring to is, sorry? The uh, former Penhorn Mall lands case number 23224 item 6.1 on our agenda. Uh, no, I read the agenda and everyone's comments were in line with mine. Let's do my checklist here. Who's not here? Douglas, do you have any questions? No, I have nothing else to add at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Miles, do you have anything? No, I'm fine at this time. Thank you. Paul's not here and Andrew's not here. Melina. Uh, yeah. Yes, I think um, if, if I recall from last month's meeting and the presentation, um, there was something that had to do, I, I didn't get to get into the report that was sent earlier, forgive me, something to do about gravel paths and, and um, that were, that were uh, in the direction of uh, towards bus stops, the major, some of the major bus stops. Um, if if uh, Melissa, forgive me, um, I, I think it was Melissa, right? If you could just um, give a little bit more explanation on that. Uh, so the current proposal shows uh, a crusher dust trail connecting um, from the Penhorn Lake side to the transit terminal uh, along running alongside the circumferential highway. Towards that's the proposal. That's the proposal. And what and what happens in in uh, in in the winter and the snow time? Uh, I'm just thinking a, a crusher uh, path is not very amicable for anybody who uh, uses a wheelchair or someone such as myself with a guide dog or, or a white cane or anyone with any other mobility issues, and particularly in, in winter season time to, to get to a bus terminal. Yeah, that's a great point. Just so I get, so if we could bear that in mind and rather than the crusher dust, maybe I, I would suggest to, to have that paved and marked okay. appropriately and wide enough for everyone to fit on. <laughs> I think Please. the proposed, um, they did provide some newer cross sections, but yeah, I'll, I'll take note of that. Is there, I don't, I'm not sure, maybe Dave can help me with this. I don't know if we have a standard that we apply to the width of these pads. Uh, yeah, so I think in uh, this location, we would be looking for, as wide as possible. So, you know, four meters is, is sort of our standard. We usually get narrowed, uh, do, but I think we got a little bit of space to work with here. Um, definitely agree with uh, Melania that, uh, you know, a hard surface here is, is preferable. That would match up with sort of the existing segment that's been already built and, uh, and that, you know, enables uh, winter service. So, uh, I think that's a comment that we might have already provided or, or that our group, when we've looked at it, ha have also kind of concluded. Okay. Melina, do you have any further questions? Uh, no, I'm good, thank you. 
and, and like millennium, Milena. Milena. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> Milena. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> Elizabeth. Do you have no, any questions? No further questions. Thank you. Megan? But I do agree that a hard surface is the way to go. Yeah. Hi. Megan. Um, so with this development, would it be the developer that would build the path, but then HRM would own it? That's generally what we see, that the developer pays for the infrastructure and they'll, if it's on their land, it's part of the development agreement process, then they usually pay for it. And then we would take it as a part of the, we take over the parkland at the end of the process um, and we would take it as a part of that. Cool. So HRM standards, as David said, for the width and things like that would apply. Right. And we haven't got formal comments yet from our AT staff. Um, so we just got in new revisions two days ago. So um, the design has changed a little bit and we're going to formally send it up to our AT staff for their review and comment at this stage. Great. Thank you. Would it be reasonable, um, Melissa, that we could have an update? Should we find out that that is, in fact, that's that's been captured and, yes. and we'll proceed? That would be, I think, helpful to the community, to the committee. So, at what point would an update be? An update in terms of for your information, or an update to provide feedback? Just so I can get the time. Just, right. I think for our information, assuming it goes in favor of the hard surface, <laughs> I can't promise there will be a, any conversation on an update if uh, if it doesn't. But um, I have no, I, you know, that I think this developer is uh, the engagement that I've had with them uh, with that the project lead was very positive around making this a uh, a good project in relation to active transportation. That was part of my questioning as well. So I'll, I'll leave that there. Um, just I think an, an update would be nice around whether or not that has that item is in particular has been achieved. Sure. Megan, do you have uh, do you have any further questions? No, thank you. Allison. Uh, no, no further questions. Thank you. Uh, I don't have any questions either. So, so if are there any further questions for anyone, you just you can identify yourselves. Otherwise, I don't see anything in the chat line that says anyone wants a second question or anything. And if not, maybe um, we can move on to the next item. Just quick, I'll just mention that I think Hugh was the one who was really interested in, in having this this presentation here and, and discussing it. So unfortunately, he's not at the meeting today. But uh, uh, thanks very much, Melissa, for uh, for coming out. No Tell them what's going on there. Yeah, and I can uh, I I can bring I can bring an update to the committee. You know, after you know we interact a little, with Melissa, on on the next stage of this and uh, and update folks. That in a month good. or two or whenever we kind of have more clear direction where this is going. Okay, thank you. Thank you to the, the committee. Okay, thank you for your time. And um, moving on to correspondence, petitions and delegations. Uh, do we have any correspondence received through the clerk's office? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. There's no correspondence for today's, oh, sorry. Actually, there is one correspondence that was uh, circulated to Circuit. the committee that was for item 8.2.1. Thank you. Just remind me at this stage, we would just identify that we've received it. There's no um, uh, opportunity for questions or anything on that, but until we get to that staff, that item, correct? Okay. Uh, yes, that is correct. But also this item, uh, this correspondence is actually on the agenda for item 8.2.1. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the committee member will have opportunity to ask, discuss. Yeah, terrific. Okay, thank you. And that brings us to 7.2 for petitions. Do we have, have we received any petitions through the clerk's office? Nothing from the clerk's office. Okay. Do we have any petitions that any of the committee members would like to present today? Seeing any raised hands or chats, I can just so you all know, I can only see a few of you. I can't see all of you. So if you're there frantically waving your hand in the camera, I may not see it. So the chat line and the raise the hand item would, is helpful to me. 
Uh, okay, so hearing none, we can move forward to reports, discussions, and updates. We do have a, an item for staff under 8.1.1, a staff update on projects and plans. Dave, do you have something to offer here to our committee? Yes, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. So I guess what I wanted to focus uh, for folks uh, at the meeting today is just a little introduction to the to the draft capital budget uh, for for next year. I think I mentioned that uh, at the last meeting, and there was committee members who expressed some interest in in learning a little bit more. Um, so right now, the the full budget package uh, has not been approved by council, but we have taken sections to to council to budget committee which is committee of the whole um for consideration and review um and so what i thought i would do or i would try to do because um i've never done this on zoom yet is just maybe give committee members a little flavor for for what's in that budget related to active transportation and uh and uh I can go from there in terms of questions, but uh, so first of all, I just posted a link there that has the um, directly to the, the the budget that that the council saw in uh, I think it was late February. Um, so and that's what I'm going to try. Oh, am I able to share my screen? I'm I just sure. tried to, and it said I'm the host had disabled it. Yeah, I will just enable you to share screen. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see, what can I... Um... Okay, so I'm gonna try this one more time. Uh, if you're trying to share uh, the link, I can do that as well. Oh. Uh, can you guys see that now? Yes. All right. So this is the document. There's the beautiful highway infrastructure and port infrastructure at the Windsor Street Exchange. Um, <laughs> And uh, so this has basically the, the so I think probably folks would, would understand that the capital or the, the budget for HRM is divided up into capital and operations. So operations is, you know, paying salaries, uh, um, snow clearing, uh, um, maintenance, all that kind of stuff. And then the capital budget is like building new stuff and, and recapitalizing existing stuff. And um, you see active transportation in, in a number of budgets. Uh, there's, there's two or three kind of main ones that I'll focus on, but I'll also kind of highlight um, some of the others. So uh, the main one or one of the, the ones that, that our group has the most to do is, is this one called Active Transportation Strategic uh, Projects. And let's see if it'll go right to it. Maybe not. Um, so you guys seen that? No. We're still seeing the um, the uh, terminal. The yeah. That's odd. You're not seeing what I'm seeing. No. Um. Let me just try. I'll try this again. How about that? Yeah. Yes. Terrific. Yeah. Sure. So um, this is active transportation strategic uh, uh, strategic projects. So as it says here in the project deliverables, it's it's all the new sidewalks, all the new multi-use pathways, um, 
uh, and some of the on-road bicycle facilities, although there's none in this particular budget right now. So what you'll see kind of coming down here is that the, the new money that was added to, to, the pro to the budget this year is a total of $3,300,000. And uh, we're carrying over 1.5 million, uh, money that was approved in previous years, but projects didn't go ahead for one reason or another, but will be implemented uh, this year. And then the next page here, um, uh, kind of has specific uh, lists of, of which projects are going to be built using that money. So um, there are some new sidewalks. These are the first chunk are, are the are the ones that that we didn't quite finish last year that that are um, are, are being carried over. So uh, sidewalks on Mount Edward Road and Flamingo Drive. Um, we have a little more work to do on the uh, Dunbrack Greenway, which connects Chain of Lakes Trail to, to Walter Havel Drive out in kind of the Armdale neighborhood. Um, and then uh, some money here, uh, a little bit of education and promotion money that we didn't spend last year that we will carry over into this year, 50000 Um uh, the funds that we use for hiring consultants and uh, doing some of the monitoring and buying monitoring equipment and that sort of stuff. So we have a little bit of that money that, that carried over as well, 250. And then for land acquisition, uh, we have $450,000 there that carried over. And that land acquisition is mostly for a, a bit of land that, that we need to acquire for the Almond Street bike lane. Um, looking at next year, and I'm not going to go through this all in detail. I just kind of wanted to kind of give you guys a, a bit of a introduction to it. So then looking at this year's projects, we have about $2.3 million. Uh, uh, so over two thirds of our full budget is, is for new sidewalks. Um, and we have a, a big project in North Preston on Kane Street. And they're in Wildwood, Creighton, Dahlia Oak. Uh, Renfrew will be a big project for us this year, Victoria Road, uh, and a bit out in Stokel. Um, and then this one here, bus stop connections and infill, that is sort of our little opportunity account. So sometimes as, as the designers are getting into projects, uh, like road recapitalization projects and that sort of thing, they see opportunities. So, so we keep some money set aside for, for that every year, and we almost always spend it. Um, in terms of multi-use pathways, the only one that we have this year is uh, near the, the Coal, Harbor, uh, Coal, Harbor, Coal Harbor Place, and it's uh, connecting the, the new multi-use pathway on Forest Hills uh, Drive to um, some recently upgraded multi-use pathways, uh, the Forest Hills Trail System. Um, so a, there's a little bit of a missing piece there that, that, that we will build this year. Um, we keep a little budget for improvements to existing facilities. And uh, this year, uh, it's mostly going to be spent on uh, some uh, drainage issues on the Dartmouth Harbor Front Trail and, uh, and some bridge repairs that, that need to happen. Uh, this chunk right here, the, the community association grants, um, as I think I've mentioned before, but a lot of the active transportation network uh, in HRM especially those kind of more rural rails to trails facilities are owned by the province and managed by uh, volunteer community groups. So uh, the way that HRM supports those folks is th those groups and those facilities, we provide grants to those community groups. So this is a list of, 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 of what we're granting to, to those community groups this year. Dave, can I interrupt you just for a second? Are we supposed to be seeing a slide, a different slide when you sort of take a, because we're not, we're only seeing that first page that you put up. I just want to oh, no. make okay. sure we're on the same page. No, we're not on the same page. Okay. I'm, le I'm learning Zoom as we go here. Uh, uh, I'm gonna just, uh, I'll take that off and I will um, share screen again. And sorry about that. Uh, we're not seeing anything yet. It looks like it has started screen sharing. Nothing. Okay. 
Well, you I will try. Do you have a presentation that you could send to Hakura and we could, she could put it up? No, I don't really have like a formal presentation. Okay. Okay. I was just going to try to walk people through this, but I don't think it's uh, it's it's the way to go. Um, I was going to say, um, if everyone's able to, I see you posted the budget in uh, the chat box, and I have okay. it open on a second screen here. If uh, if anyone, everyone saw that uh, link that was posted in chat. So the presentation deck uh, would be probably the one that we choose. No, you know what, folks, I'm not going to, I think the way this is working out is not um, as I intended. So what, you know, really what I think I might just do is uh, I might table this for right now and, and come back to it at a future meeting. But um, what I might just highlight for everybody quickly. Um, actually, um, Madam Chair, I... Uh uh, so you to David, uh, if you can send me or just guide me where I can find that PDF, uh, I think I will be able to share. Okay, Douglas just uh, sent the uh, a link to the actual PDF. Okay. You should be able to open that directly. And I believe we're on page... Uh, probably around 153, 154. Yeah. 153. Okay, give me 30 seconds. And, yeah, uh, no worries. I'm going to show it. Thank you, Douglas. That's uh, super helpful. The benefit of having two screens. <laughs> yeah. So, I have three and I get confused by it sometimes. It's like, okay, where, where did I leave that? <laughs> <clears throat> I'm having a hard time. <laughs> so just while we're while we're while we're waiting, um sure. Oh wait. So could you just like scroll down to the table of contents? Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Yes. So just really slowly stop there. Um if you go up just a little bit, um, if folks want to look at the projects that are in uh, active transportation strategic, um, you'll see about $3.3 million um, uh, plus a bit of carry forward. Uh, so that you can get a detailed list of what we intend to build next year from that budget. Um, what was the name of the, it again? Active transportation strategic. I believe it starts on page 152. That's correct. That's great. And if you scroll down a little bit more, so there's the, you can kind of see these are the new projects there. You can see now new sidewalks. If you scroll down a little bit more, you can see that there's about $2.3 million uh, in, in new sidewalks. And, and those are the locations. Uh, those are the estimated costs of those new sidewalks. Um, if you scroll down a little bit more, uh, you can see there's uh, one multi-use pathway, a short segment in Coal Harbor this year. Um, if you scroll down a little bit more, uh, so those would, uh, that's when, when Councillor Kent interrupted me there to tell me that no one could see what I was talking about. Um, uh, the new, the community association grants, those are grants that we give to those volunteer community groups to either capitalize, to build new stuff or to recapitalize existing, existing facilities. Um, uh, they can also use that, that money for planning and, and for design. And, uh, and then you can also see that the final line there, the emergency capital and education promotion, that's where we uh, are granting that money uh, to groups for education and promotion activities. If you can scroll down a little more. Um, 
And so the, this is the general kind of stuff. So AT amenities, that's where we um, take money to, to, to pay for on-street bike parking, um, to support some of the tactical active transportation projects. Uh, um, uh, we're going to have a pilot wayfinding pro program this year. So that's from that. Uh, education and promotion under that is, is related to um, advertising and marketing of our facilities. Uh, miscellaneous integration opportunities is, is for, again, seeing if there are other projects where we can tack on an AT element that we haven't quite seen in December, we, we would use that 75000 And then the $100,000 is for, um, for uh, some of our monitoring activities and any planning and design consulting that, 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 we, um, that we would hire to, to design future capital projects. Uh, and then AT planning resources. I like how we call our people resources. That basically is is two of the AT planners in our group are, are funded from capital. So maybe I'll just pause there if, if folks have any questions on, on that particular budget or. I have a question. Okay. <laughs> sure. Um... Is there a section for bike lanes somewhere else? Yep. Okay. <laughs> I was like, okay, I'm seeing sidewalks, multi-use pathways, where are the bike lanes? Um, yep. So that's great. So the AT planning resources, the planning staff, so that goes towards two people's salaries. Right. So is And their benefits. No one's making a hundred grand as an AT <laughs> planner. So it's, 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 um, yeah. So the other folks in your department are funded through the operations. That's correct. Yep. Okay. Um, and so when it comes to the cycling network that was supposed to be done by 2022, that's now pushed to 2025, like what kind of financial resources would you need to get that done by 2022? And would that be more on the operations side or the capital side? Um, it, it would require more than just resources. It would require some resources, but it would also require things like development projects that are in the right of way to get built faster, or it would require the Cogswell interchange project to get built three times as fast as they're planning on getting it built right now. Um, so it's, uh, it would require property acquisition processes and negotiations with CN to move faster than they are now. So it's it's part of it could happen with more resources, but there's also a myriad of other factors that, that kind of play into um, the timelines to actually construct projects. Okay, but... Um... Like if you added another planning staff person that in the AT department, that would probably make a big impact on getting some of those things done faster. It might, but it, it also, you know, it's not, you know, our group does, you know, to get a, a project built, it is, you know, probably about one third our job. Um, it's at least one third and maybe more the job of, of the folks in design engineering which is a whole other group who, who do the actual detailed designs. Then it's, you know, it's the time and resources of the construction group that oversee the construction of the project. So their resources would have to increase. And so it's, you know, it, it wouldn't just be like adding one or two more people to our group. It would be adding one or two more people to a number of different groups. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Megan. Um, I'm just going to make my way through the rest of the speaking list to make sure we don't miss out on anyone. Ashley, would you like to offer, ask any questions? Douglas? Oops, oh, sorry. Um, I'm not sure if this would be the time and place to ask this question, but I did have a quick question with one of the new sidewalk projects on Stokel Drive. Um, yeah. The project outlines going from Beaver Bank to the first bus stop. Um, I used to live in the area and that's a bus stop I'm familiar with. Have you considered 
were there considerations on instead of connecting the first bus stop to Beaver Bank Road, connecting it to the intersection of Armcrest and Stokel, where there tend to, tends to be more sidewalks and just people walking in general instead of the Beaver Bank Road intersection? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't have a detailed answer for that. Sorry, Douglas, right now. I'll, um, no I'll get a bit more information from you. Um, but I would say that any new sidewalk that gets built is goes through a super rigorous process <laughs> to, to actually get it on the list. Cause you know, we've got this massive list and this massive yeah. deficit. I'm of certain sidewalks. the decision didn't come from nowhere. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. Okay. Um, Miles, do you have anything? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Melana. Very good, Councillor Kent. <laughs> Thumbs up for you. Um, <clears throat> yes, I do. Um, could you could you just give a, a little bit more elaboration on um, what it would consist of this uh, wayfinding pilot project? Is it something that's pertaining to um, the tactile markings that have been installed on South Park and Sackle right now, which are done, I have to say, uh, commend whoever did it. They did them very well, but they're hugely disorientating. So if you're crossing from the public garden side over to to um, what's that, the, um, the YMCA, there's a tactile marking identifying a curb. And then there is, a, there is a bike lane and then there's another tactile mark in there. And when you cross South Park, you come up on the first tactile marking on the other end. And for someone who cannot see and uses a white cane or a guide dog or has partial sight, it indicates to us that we're up on the curb. So I would actually be making a, a right directly into the bike lane. Uh, I'm not sure who approved that, but it's a job well done, but utterly confusing for those who can't see and use tactile markers. Does that make sense? Um, what I, just said? <laughs> I know what you're, exactly what you're talking about. Um, I'd say that's not, so the wayfinding project is, is really to sort of test um, actual physical signage uh, that would be placed at, at sort of key intersections and nodes to help people who are bicycling kind of navigate uh, the network. Um, the tactile um, markings at those protected, so we now, I mean, that's sort of our, one of our first protected bicycle intersections. And you do get a bit of a, uh, the guidance there for where to place them is, is um, complicated. And uh, I think, uh we should probably work a little more with you and and with the cnib on on uh describing and helping folks understand these new types of intersections because they're going to be through the cogswell project and and they will be in in other places too but it's it's kind of like we're showing that you almost have to cross two travel ways um, to get to the to the sidewalk but it's uh, it's a new kind of feature and and uh, and I think it's one that that we need to get the word out a little bit more with the visually impaired community well, yes I, I, I would like to correct you Dave uh, not just a little bit more with me and CNIB who um, it's it's fully noted. I volunteered with them for 20 years, but they're a little bit lagging and slagging in, in what the responsibilities are. Let it be noted here, I'm being recorded. Um, um, but a lot more work needs to be done in communication with those who are blind and partially sighted uh, because it's getting very confusing to be traveling uh, the city everywhere. And I travel everywhere, both on my tandem. So I love the protected bike lanes, one, and with my guide dog and on the bus and as a passenger, not as a driver in a car. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kent, you might be muted there. I am, I am. If only my husband had a mute button, right? <laughs> okay, so Milena, you are finished your questioning, I'm assuming. So we'll move now to Elizabeth. Have any? I don't, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, 
I think at this stage, I'm going to, mine is not a question. Did I miss? No, I didn't get to Allison. Yes, okay, no questions. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, I just want to add, uh, just because we're talking about projects and plans, um, and I don't know if I, I think it would be appropriate here, but I'm just going to give it a shot. I just want to make sure you're aware that we um, staff have started an engagement process for the Portland Street functional plan. It's a Portland Street corridor that needs some work and there's a large uh, community engagement and, and um, industry engagement, agency engagement. And we've, we had a first meeting the other day online. It was well attended, 250 people engaged in it. But the most important piece here is I think that as committee members in active transportation, this would be a, a big consideration in any kind of large corridor functional plan. So if you have the opportunity to go to Shape Your City and look for that particular um, project, it's still early. This is not something you'll see come to fruition over the next course of the next year, but every piece of information that we can put into it will influence the results. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention because I, I that would not have been on anybody's radar prior to now, but that is go ongoing right now. Anything else to offer there, Dave? Yeah, I just might ask uh, our legislative assistant to to put the, the budget back up there again, and maybe just to go to that yeah. that front section with the uh, the list of of uh, specific budgets. And I won't go through the rest in detail, but I'll just I'll let folks on the on committee the know, know that, that if they, 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 they want to want to dig in, I'll show you where to dig and what you'll find. Um, so maybe just go back up to like page three or four. I think it is where the, 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 um, yeah. Oh my God, I was right. So if you just slowly scroll, um, uh, so just, so things like, I'll just stop you like things like bus stop accessibility improvements that will include some active transportation that will, you know, actual pads sometimes, some connections between the pads to the uh, we don't we don't have to go to the budget to the to the the street and that sort of thing. Um, if you scroll down a little bit more, um, you'll see Cogswell interchange redevelopment. So that includes a, a lot of active transportation facilities, um, uh, protected bike lanes, a multi-use pathway, really side sidewalks. Scroll down a little bit more. Keep going. Oh, there's the multimedia. There's the corridor stuff there. Yeah. Under major. Uh, maybe a little bit more. More, all that fire department stuff. Keep going. There we go. A little bit yeah, more. so. Exactly. So everything that you see there is a multi, a major strategic multimodal corridor. Those are kind of the large corridors in the in the city that that are traditionally been planned and built for for moving motor vehicles that we're going back and, and trying to do more complete streets planning processes for them. So again, in a lot of those, there will be, I think, in all of them, uh, as far as I can tell, there will be uh for most of them uh, a big uh part of it will be having safer places and more comfortable places for people to walk and bicycle um none of those are getting built uh i think the uh, um bears road is getting built hopefully we'll get dutch Ro village road built next year but the rest of them are in kind of the planning and and, and design kind of continuum so you can scroll down a little bit more And more. The money's all kind of hidden in lots of little places. Mm -hmm. um, so just I'll get you to stop. So you wouldn't know it, but other road related works, that budget there, that's where we take some money to recapitalize street to street walkways. So um, if you live in places or visit places like Coal Harbor and Lower Sackville, 
um, other places too, but those are the, the main ones. A big part of the pedestrian activity in the pedestrian network kind of happens behind and between people's houses. Um, and uh, those are all kind of put in when those communities were built back in the 70s and 80s and haven't really been recapitalized since. So we have kind of an ongoing program to, to, to make some improvements there. Maybe scroll down a little bit more. I only have a couple more to highlight. Um, so Megan, if you look in regional center AAA bikeways, that's the account for, for building um, uh, local street bikeways, multi-use pathways and protected bike lanes in the regional center. So that's, uh, and that's, and most of the money you see there is money from the federal and provincial governments. Uh, uh, but uh, so dig into that. And if you folks have any questions on that, let me know. Maybe scroll down a little bit more and I just might highlight a couple others. Um, so sidewalk renewals, that's a pretty big account and, and that's where we go and, and where the, the sidewalk has not built, been built properly in the first place or, or has crumbled after a number of years. We use money from that budget to, to recapitalize it. Um, if you have seen the changes on the Forest Hills Parkway over the last couple of years, that's been funded from, from this account. Uh, you can see streetscapes there. So we're about to spend uh, something like 11 or maybe $12 million uh, changing the streetscape on Spring Garden Road. And, and a really important part of that project is widening the sidewalks uh, and uh, making room for active transportation. And uh, yeah, so that's, you know, I, we could spend a lot of time on this, but I guess I just wanted to at least point out to you folks where the information is. And, uh, and when you click on that, you get and look at the, the, the project lists behind it, you get a pretty good, uh, clear description of, of, of where the work is, is planned for, for this year. So that uh, Madam Chair, that's all I had on, on that. Um, I guess the only other kind of item I just wanted to, to highlight for folks uh, were a couple of uh, public engagement opportunities that are happening right now. You already just mentioned the, the, the Coal Harbor Road, Portland Street, um, and uh, so that's happening right now. Um, and the other one is the Windsor Street Exchange project. Uh, and again, that project is not, you know, doesn't have active transportation in the title anywhere, but um, it's it's viewed by staff and, and hopefully by the public when they, they get a comment on it is, is a big opportunity to, um, to make it, um, it couldn't get any worse um, than it is right now for walking and bicycling. So, um, so we want to make the connections that to kind of, connect the Bedford Highway and Mount St. Vincent and all that much better to the peninsula. Um, we want to to you think about how to get folks down to Africville National Store site and, and make the connections kind of that way, up to Windsor Street. Um, so uh, if you go to, I'll, I'll post the Shape Your City link in, in, the, in the chat there in a sec, but there's information on the project there. And I think the first round of public engagement is are underway or just about to be underway. Um, and just thank Melanie, pronounced name, I don't think I said it right. Um, so uh, you took a few of the staff members out uh, uh, on uh, on a tour of, I think you guys went down the Bears Road multi-use pathway and you maybe went some other places. So uh, I know staff really appreciate those opportunities and, and uh, thank you for your time and in, in, uh, in providing your perspective and helping us learn how to build things that are better and accessible for everybody. Melana, you, you almost and that's staff report. There's lots going on, <laughs> but uh, but uh, those are some of the highlights. And and I just I wanted to shine a light on the budget because it's a it's a big beast of a document, and there's a lot of information there. But I think it's important that that folks, and especially an advisory committee like yourselves, kind of have an introduction to to where where to find the information. Thank you, Dave. I really appreciate that. I, I <clears throat> excuse me on behalf of the committee. Um, the uh, the other 
piece of this, the being the shape your city is a, it's worth, I think, committee members periodically just checking in and seeing what's on at play. You might see something happening in within a district that it would be worth you knowing about. And if you had something that you wanted to raise, it's a really good tool to be to use as so and similar to the budget, it would be hidden inside of other things that you wouldn't necessarily be aware of. So it, it's another way for you to have have a, a voice. <clears throat> That was really helpful. Um, if if there are no other further questions for Dave, we can move forward to 8.2 uh, around a committee discussion. And that's in relation to 8.2.1, Mumford Road Active Transportation. So um, we did get some, uh, uh, oh, I don't know where it is now. We did get a correspondence on that particular project. Um, this would have been, I think it was in relation to transit buses idling and being uh, disruptive to the flow of bicycling. There was a request within the letter to ask for the transit ter transit buses to idle somewhere else, potentially. I, I, I don't know if that's something um, we want to discuss. I'm not even sure if that is an option for the bus drivers to actually pick another location that might be a dedicated position place for that transit has identified. Um, so I, at this stage, does anyone have any comments or, or anything to offer on that correspondence that they might want either answers to or actions um, for information to come forward on it? Um, I can provide a few comments first and foremost. <laughs> Um, I typically bus through that area pretty much daily coming back and forth from work. And, and um, I definitely have noticed a lot more buses recently idling along Mumford Road. I'm not sure where exactly they're referring to. I'm a little confused at which stop they're talking about. Um, but I ha definitely have seen a lot more buses idling um, Definitely along Mumford Road, next, right next to the terminal. Um, the bus stop is right next to the Mount Olivet Cemetery. I've seen buses idling there, which is weird to me because I typically haven't seen buses idling there um, <clears throat> prior to, I want to say, maybe two months ago. And as far as I'm aware, no major transit changes have been implemented since the lower cycle change just back in November of 2019. So I'm not sure why buses have suddenly started idling there. I know there's a lot of space close by on Desmond Avenue where buses typically like to idle. Uh, same with behind the Mumford Terminal, kind of behind the Walmart uh, near the Marks area. Um, that's previously where I've seen buses idling. So I guess my question would be, is there anything that's now preventing buses from idling in those areas that's putting them on Mumford Road? I, I'm in full agreement with this email that um, having the buses idle on Mumford Road is an ideal, not just for cycling and active transportation, but just for other buses try <clears throat> trying to use that as a corridor. So that's just me adding a few comments to fuel discussion. Thank you. I think in, in the interest of the sort of the, the uh, process, it would be um, the options here, <clears throat> excuse me, the options here would be that if we wanted to have further discussion just around the correspondence or actually want to refer this on and to the Transportation Standing Committee to make, give either uh, a, a, a back an information report on the situation there and potentially um, if there is a way to resolve that issue. I don't think it's out of order from this committee being the Active Transportation Committee to, um, to do that in particular because of the impact that it's having on uh, the bicycling community. So uh, we, we would need someone to move a motion to that effect. We then can, if there's a seconder, we could then have further conversation on that that recommendation and then a vote on it to move it to the transportation committee or we could have um i think that's probably the best way to to proceed if if there's an interest so i'll throw it out there and if not we if we don't have an interest in that um 
we can accept it as as okay with just in receipt of the correspondence. Does that make sense, um, Madam Clerk? I think uh, I'm right on that. Yeah. It makes sense, but I think it's really up to what the committee is trying to yeah. do. If the committee just want to bring this uh, issue, you know, bring awareness to this issue by the uh, Transportation Standing Committee, maybe the right way to do it is just uh, the committee determined to share this correspondence and sending it to the Transportation Standing Committee. Um, but yeah, I think that would be appropriate steps to go. Uh, to share this correspondence with this transportation standing committee. However, um, sorry, if the committee is interested in um, like hearing updates on this from the staff members, or sorry, I, I just like to have more clarity on that. Do we have staff who can speak to it here tonight? Uh, we only have, um, I'm not sure if David is still here. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know very much about this one. I could uh, connect with transit staff and, and, and get a little update from them and bring it back to the next meeting. David, you were breaking up there. I, I, I'm not quite sure what you said. You could... Uh, I could uh, talk to my colleagues uh, at Halifax Transit uh, just to get some more background on what's going on and uh, make them aware of the, the letter, uh, which they probably got through 311. Uh, but uh, I could uh, find out, hear from them and bring that back to the next, uh, next committee. I, th I still think that from a matter of process for the record, we should put that on as a motion to have yep. um, a staff, have this deferred to either the transportation standing committee or through staff to get some feedback from transit. Then depending on the results of that, we might be able to then flip it to the trans transportation standing committee if we want act something actionable. But either way, I think a motion should be on the floor for record. Does anyone have any interest to pursue either of those? If not, we would, again, we would just accept it as correspondence for consideration as, as maybe pro this particular project or any other projects that come along and might have the same kind of scenario. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll let someone oh. else go first. Uh, Miles, do you wanna go ahead? Yeah, I'd like to see it referred to staff as a step that eventually could take it to the uh, Transportation Standing Committee. Uh, my, my exposure to this, whether it be on foot or whether it be driving through that area, I, I too have noticed a lot more buses that are blocking the route. And uh, I think to do its service, I'd like to get it referred to staff and um, uh, we would have some discussion points from there and then perhaps I would move it to the uh, Transportation Standing Committee. Okay, so am I hearing from that I, uh, that you would like to put a motion on the floor to refer to staff uh, and uh, address some of the comments that have been raised here as well? Yes, Becky, I'd like to make, make that motion. Um, perhaps the clerk, would you, can you frame that in a way that is a, sort of a, a, a motion that actually makes, is, is solid and makes sense for us that we could post in the chat so we all know what we're asking for. Madam Chair, it's Alicia. Um, I can, hi, Alicia. Assist, hi, I can assist you with that. I was going to volunteer that for you guys. Perfect. Thank um, you. So what it sounds like is that we're gonna refer it to staff first, get some information and then go from there. Yes. Um, yes. So we could have the motion say that the active Transportation Advisory Committee refer this matter to staff requesting further information. And if okay. you want to be specific about where, like exactly the bus is idling in particular, if that's if that's what you want, let me know. Yeah. I, I think that perhaps leaving it open allows them to read it, interpret it. I think that it the discussion afterwards, once the motion is on the floor, we can identify the kinds of things we'd like to see in the information report. So let's start, let's let's move with let's move forward with that motion and we'd need a seconder. Thank you. 
Are you looking for a seconder? Yes, I am. I can second that. Thank you, Douglas. We have a seconder. So now that motion is on the floor. And if anyone would like to speak to it, this would be our opportunities to be much more specific about what we want to see uh, in the way of information that would help us help us make a determination of a next step if there is one. So I'm going to go through the speakers list again. I'll move down the list and start in the middle. And Miles, I'll let because it's you put the motion on the floor, we'll close with you. So your comments can come towards the end if you'd like. Douglas, yes. do you have anything to add there? So, I'm sorry, you cut out for me. Could you repeat that? I just want to see, ask if you have any further comments on this motion or want to add anything to make sure that it's covered within the report. Sorry, no, I have nothing else to add. Thank you. Ashley? Oh, yeah, I just want to um, put my voice to the importance of following this up because it is one of the major links to for, for cyclists um, off the peninsula or onto the trail as well. So. Okay. Um, Allison? Not hearing anything? Yeah, sorry, I have nothing to add. <laughs> okay, thank you. Megan? Nothing to add. Thank you. Elizabeth? Nothing to add. Milena? Um, I don't think I have anything to add. Um, I, I can't stand idling buses, idling anything. <laughs> but but um, I do have a question. Is, is that is, that Mumford area uh, bus terminal? Is it not slated for redesign at some point somewhere uh, 20 years ago? Does anyone have an answer for that? I don't think we have an answer here tonight, Milena, but that would be a good question to include in the staff report. Is there any, what the future plans are for that site? Yeah, that that's that's all, because the, then maybe that would answer why they're all idling over there. Maybe there's, uh, I mean, I have no idea, so. Yeah. But that's all, thank you. Um, before I get you to you, Miles, I'm gonna add my two cents worth in on this one. I think that it would be helpful in the staff report to identify the, the uh, current state of play at that particular location. Why are the buses idling there? Is this a dedicated space that Metro Transit has determined? Or is, there, is this a discretionary decision of the bus drivers themselves? They might just see each other there and all, all choose to be there. If, if depending on the, the answer to that would determine, I guess, if we need to recommend something differently. Um, and if, because if it was a transit, if it was a transit decision, and this is interrupting, transit needs to make a, a, a bigger choice, which might re require uh, capital investment, land investment, I don't know, choosing another space for the buses to lay over. That is a traditional thing that buses do. They have, they, in order to get to keep on their schedule, they may have to stop somewhere and wait so that the next bus stop is not impacted by them being early and then people are missing their buses. If it's something that the drivers are just coordinating themselves, that might be an internal operational choice that transit can just handle versus uh, a bigger a bigger decision. So um, I would like to know an answers to, to those because I think they will influence what we do here. <clears throat> and I think that's all Excuse I have. Excuse me, to Madam Chair, if I may. I just wanted to make one clarification point that uh, this committee is uh, advisory committee and this committee does not have, it will be out of mandate for this committee to request a staff report. So right now how the motion is worded is that the active transportation advisory committee defer this matter to Halifax Transit requesting further information. Um, so uh, if this motion be passed, uh, the clerk's office is going to share this correspondence to the staff and they might be able to provide an update or the in a form memo or presentation, I'm not sure. Um, but when the updates coming back from the staff, you won't be in a format of the port. Um, mm -hmm. But I just wanted to make a, a point on that. Yeah, uh, no, and I appreciate that. I think that is important. And I called it a staff report. That's that's my error. I'm used to my other <laughs> venues. Um, but I still, at the same time, I think it's helpful for us to have a conversation around the kinds of things that would be useful to have in that information feedback that we might get from them. So however that can get 
translated. And Dave, that might be something that you could uh, help articulate uh, um, with transit uh, to help help with that. And also uh, the any motions that we might or or recommendations or transfer re referrals to the standing committee as well. It's not specifically to um, make a recommendation, but to ask for consideration of, of addressing something that might in fact need it. So, um, Hugh, uh, Ma, uh, Miles, do you want to wrap things up? Yeah, it, 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 that's well said. Thanks for everyone for uh, participating. Thank you. So if I'm not have, seeing any identification of any further questions, I'll call for the question. All in favor, say aye. Aye. <laughs> there was a, Anybody else want to say aye? I heard Miles. Aye. <laughs> I think we're all <laughs> muted. <laughs> uh, those, those opposed? Hearing no nays, I'm going to consider right. this motion carried. Thank you. <laughs> we'll get better with time. Now I know how you how everyone feels when I do that in another meeting, because I'll be out there and I'll say aye. And then I raise my hand because sometimes yeah. I think, okay, just in case I'm not, I'm muted. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, so that concludes our business. 